I just want to talk about, too, some ways that we can reframe that thinking when we're working with children. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's no such thing as a bad kid is something like I always heard my dad saying because we he grew up or he teaches like a lot of BIPOC students and These are terms that are like thrown on them all the time. And on top of that, he was teaching special education. So like, as you're saying with your older brother, Mm -hmm. like whenever there's a diagnosis, that's it's kind of forgotten. Like, oh, he's bad. He's a bad kid. He doesn't behave like, et cetera, et cetera. When that's not the case, every behavior is asking for something. Every behavior is the kid saying that there's something that he needs. Um, And so a lot of these, a lot of the causes for the unexpected behaviors, which I like to use, is like the unable um, to access the content. So that might be because of something that's happening at home. If we go back and talk about the ACEs or because he's not receiving the accommodations that they need in the classroom to access the content um, or it's just it's too high level, whatever that may be, they can't access it. Second is boredom. I think a lot of times um, kids, a lot of times are maybe too smart for the content and they they already blew past it or they're not interested. They're bored. They're bored. So why would they sit there and just be quiet? Like <laughs> you're, you're, they're bored. They want to play. They, they're in a social environment. A lot of kids don't even get to socialize at home. A lot of kids don't have other kids to socialize with. So when they're in class and they're communicating with their friends, they're not being bad. They're not focused on the content for another reason. Um, or this is the only time they get to be social. It could be a lot of different things. Um, another thing that I think is really important is it could be that there was no rapport building prior to the session or the lesson or whatever you may have. Um, I think if you don't build rapport and build your relationship with the individual like early on, um, then you'll never have like no unexpected behaviors. They have no reason to respect you if they don't feel like you respect them, if they don't feel like you didn't get to know them or know what's why or let them know why it's important to be here. If you didn't build that relationship like from the foundation, then I feel like unexpected behaviors are to be expected. Um, Another one is like self-esteem, overstimulation or understimulation um, and the content being unrelatable. So a lot of times, especially in like the American like education system, like we don't, black black people and BIPOC people, we don't usually learn about ourselves. Um, and I think that's something I hear about a lot when like students go to HBCUs and they get to learn about like their own history and learn about people that like were in their field that look like them and act like them. Um, they're way more interested. Like they're like, this is the best I've ever done in a history class or whatever the class may be. So if the content is unrelatable, then I think that's another reason why we might see that. I mean, those are all such important things to take into consideration. And I think, too, we, we, you know, traditional education of you sit in your chair, you listen, you do what you're told. That's not how most kids operate. I mean, if you think about that, it's so unnatural. And so right. then <laughs> if you as a child can't fit that mold, then, you know, you're bad. You're not a good listener. You're not a good student. And I think one of the three things that you really point out that I wrote down and I'm going to anytime, you know, I'm working with a grad student or anybody with behavior uh, that's having it, that is working with a student that has any sort of behavior issues is just what is the cause? What am I doing? And what do they need from me? And I think those are three things to really whenever, because like you said earlier, they don't just do something to do it. It's they're doing something for a reason. And it's, you know, oftentimes can be from any of the things you just mentioned or who knows something else that happened that morning at home and they're trying to do the best that they can to function. And I think too, along the lines of ACEs, something that I think is also so important. I, again, it's one of my things I wrote down <laughs> is that, um, you know, instead of thinking, what's wrong with you, what happened, and reframing that to what happened to you. Mm-hmm. And that, and if that doesn't just flip a switch and make you realize, I don't feel like I could, as an educator, as an SLP, if I, if a child was misbehaving or what I thought was misbehaving, and I reframe that, it immediately changes and softens whatever it is that's going on to really figure out there's a reason they're not mm-hmm. just doing this to make you have a bad day. It's not personal. Exactly. It's, there's exactly. a reason. 
I tell no. people that all the time, like they're they're not they're having a bad day. They're not trying to give you a bad day or they're having mm-hmm. a hard time. They're not trying to give you a hard time. So definitely taking a step back and trying yeah. to understand the reason behind the behavior um, and what I'm doing and what I could do. Like those are very important steps to take. And then I also think it's important to note that kids really internalize the things that we label them. Like I can't tell you how many times I've had like a little black boy come into my room for a session and he's just mad and he's upset. And I, I ask him like, what's going on? Like, are you upset about something? Did something happen? Um, And it might take a lot of times, it might take a little bit to get them to open up. And we have to be patient because they have no reason to just open up to us about like vulnerable things. And so I think a lot of times I'll take the first five, 10 minutes and really try to understand what's going on and why they're in this mood. If it's something that happened at home or in class or with their friends. And after we get down to the bottom of it and we talk about it, we have a great rest of the session. Like, because I can't expect him to be in this mood and then just throw work or whatever we're doing in the session on top of him and expect it to go well. That's when we're going to see the behaviors that we don't want. Um, So I think really, if you'd like take the five to 10 minutes, it's going to go a long way than really just trying to push things on them in the beginning. Mm 